The next one is, is our commercial partnership we have with Meridian Energy and Naitahu on Kakapo. And Neil Barclay is General Manager for Meridian Energy's retail division and has a lot of work, done a lot of work in the commercial sector on why business should, should invest in threatened species. Now Neil and I go back a few years uh, when Keith Turner was CEO of Meridian Energy and I was CEO of Antarctica New Zealand, we built the largest uh, wind farm in Antarctica and uh, put up three of the world's best turbines, which ended up being one of the best wind turbine sites in the world. And it was largely a result of, of Neil's work uh, that we were able to do that. And it's been an absolute delight to move out of that job and back into another relationship with Meridian on Kakapo in uh, Miraheku. Kira ora kato Working. Uh, kia ora tato. Ko te mata, te moanga, ko tukituki tuki te awa, no hiratonga aho. Ko Neil Barclay, toku ingua, uh, no reira, tenakoto, tenakoto, tenakoto kato. Um, thanks, Lou, for the introduction um, and the credit for installing those three turbines. It actually happened about a year before I joined the company, but I'll take it anyway. Um, but we're certainly involved in operations and so forth throughout that, uh, that Ant Antarctic experience. Look, I wanted to d introduce myself using a me here today for two reasons. Firstly, um, I seriously need the practice. And secondly, um, the, the thing I've come to love about the me here is it's a great grounding. Uh, it reminds me of where you're from, or it reminds me yeah, from where I'm from, and my connection to New Zealand and the New Zealand environment. And like many of you, I'm sure you've got memories growing up as a kid. Mine were in Hawke's Bay, larking about in those endless summer days in the Tukituka River, um, having a great time. Now, you can still swim in, in most parts of the Tukituka River, from what I understand, but that's not true of a lot of the waterways in our country anymore. And uh, so I think the, 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 the impact that our lifestyles, business practices are having on the likes of fresh water and endangered species is something that needs to change, clearly. Talking to the converted here, but it's something that is becoming to, to become accepted and understood in the business world, I think. Um, now we, we, sorry, green Ford? The big green one. Hard, real hard. And point somewhere. Oh, that one. Um, so we we um, struck a partnership with Doc in June last year to um, become the national sponsor for the Kakapo um, Recovery Program. Um, at today, as of today, I think there's 160 odd Kakapo birds alive. Um, I understand back in the 1980s there was as few as 18 known individuals. So that program which kicked off in 1990 has done an awesome job in bringing that species back from the absolute brink of extinction. Um, and uh, it's a world class conservation effort, clearly. Uh, the recovery program uh, meets many of the, or ticks many of the boxes from a Meridian perspective um, in terms of our involvement. First off, uh, the location. Most of the recovery is, is occurring in three islands around Southland and Fiordland, very close to our main asset base, which is the Manapuri Power Scheme. Um, it's been a great opportunity to continue to grow and foster our, our great relationship with Naitahu um, through. Uh, yeah, and, and the ongoing stewardship of, of natural resources that we work with them with. It's a great opportunity to take the baton over and the responsibility for that program from our largest customer. New Zealand Aluminium Smelters sponsored that program for the last 25 years and needs to take a lot of credit for the, for the, um, the progress that's been made. And lastly, I think from a, um, from a company perspective, we, we generate all our electricity from renewable sources, primarily water, but, but also some wind. Now, hydro, as you'd know, is an awesome renewable resource uh, from a renewable perspective, but it doesn't come without its environmental impacts. 
Uh, so we're always mindful of the need to put something back into their environment to work with mitigation programs and the like. And that's part of the thinking that got us heavily engaged in the Kākāpō Recovery Program. I'm still not getting it, am I? Maybe you just push them out. <laughs> um, so more broadly, why, why should business be involved in, in um, environmental sustainability, really? Um, I, I borrowed this diagram off our sustainability at manager at work. It gives you a logical flow, if you like. Um, I mean, fundamentally, as a business, we take um, uh, natural resources, convert it into a commodity, and sell those to customers. Um, so business for us, and, and, and we're, not a, we're not unique in the New Zealand environment, obviously a lot of our uh, economic prosperity is built on the primary industries and manufacturing, but business for us is very much a function of society and what society want from us. We produce those commodities, we sell them. And then society is very much a function of the environment in which we live in. So it's that interplay of, and interconnectedness that I think is, is that we've become very aware of over the last decade or so in terms of understanding our responsibility to manage both the environment plus the customer society angles as a business. Now that, that, that's sort of a logical way of explaining it. For me it's a lot simpler than that. At Meridian we're a company made up of people. Um, we provide services to customers who are all people. Those people despite not potentially showing it uh, that much over the last 200 years, are becoming more and more um, aware of the environmental concerns that are out there and, and actually starting to care far more about environmental impacts that businesses and their lifestyles are having. So if our customers and our staff really care about it, we as a business need to really care about it. The, the, I liken the, the, the change in business thinking around sustainability a bit, to, a bit to, to, to the challenge that we've faced with health and safety over the last 10 to 15 years. If you had talked to a group of people 15 years ago as an executive about safety, you would have got a lot of cynicism coming back at you. you know, a lot of that, uh, you're only saying that to cover your own backside sort of, sort of uh, feedback. And, and certainly at a board level, they weren't particularly interested. Um, and it was, it's been a bit similar with sustainability from a business perspective in the feedback we get in terms of there was a lot of fatigue that came into the word. A lot of people sort of started pushing back saying, I don't even know how to deal with this, I don't know how I can contribute. Um, greenwash became the sort of order of the day probably over the last, um, well, probably the preceding decade. But we've seen that change quite dramatically um, and now there's a much stronger focus um, and, and, and certainly the businesses I've worked in and making sure that safety and sustainability at the top of the list. In fact, if you were to turn up at a Meridian board meeting, you'd find safety and sustainability you know, within the top one or two agenda items. Now, I think that would be consistent with a lot of businesses in this country now. So the realisation that it's important has gone to the top and, uh, and um, it's been acted on. Um, what, what's really... Um, heartening though and fascinating is though that investors are showing that they really care as well. Um, there's an investment fund in the US called BlackRock. Um, it's the biggest investment fund in the world. They've got trillions of dollars under management. The CEO of that company wrote to the top 500 um, uh, listed entities in the US over the last, um, earlier this year, in January in fact, um, challenging them on what he was seeing was a dearth of sustainable business practice and planning going on and challenging them to lift their games dramatically in terms of building long-term business practices that are sustainable. And he was talking from a, a broad sense in the word of cons sustainability, so talking about people, talking about customers, business models and certainly the environment. So there's the old saying, money talks. Well, when you've got the guy in the room who's got most of the money saying something, uh, CEOs start to listen. So I think that's becoming more and more um, a consistent theme that we're seeing in our world. Um, now, from a Meridian perspective, we weren't sitting back waiting for the BlackRock CEO to send us a letter. Um, I think we've had sustainability at the core of what we stand for really since our inception. And that's why we continue to provide leadership around renewables only gener generation. We continue uh, to work with the likes of Naitahu and other core um, stakeholders around water stewardship. 
We're pushing EVs at the moment for the opportunity, electric vehicles that is, for the opportunity to take a whole bunch of carbon out of the, uh, out of the New Zealand economy. And it's certainly the thinking that um, we've had um, as we've worked through uh, working with the DOC and the Kakapo program. Yep. So how we've been going, um, I've got a bit of a video that we'll show you in a sec, but uh, um, I guess um, it's, been an, it's been a massive eye-opener for me personally, uh, having some visibility over the, the capability and the science that DOC have and can bring to bear on an issue, in this case the Kakapo, um, if they're resourced properly. And, and that's been our, uh, our part to play. We've been able to bring some resources to bear on the problem to help them do their stuff and do it extremely well. Now, there has been some awesome business benefits that have come out of this for us as well. Um, when we went uh, to, to market in social media channels primarily around uh, some of these sorts of videos that we'll show you in a sec, um, we got over a million engagements with different New Zealanders around this particular topic. 160 birds, but a million particular views of our stuff from New Zealanders. So it engendered a lot of interest. We've, um, it's, been, uh, it's been awesome in terms of building staff engagement. Um, our people love it. And um, we've been fortunate, and I think we're developing a bit of a continual program to, to be able to send a couple of people down to Whenua Ho and work with the dock rangers um, and see what they do and hopefully make themselves a bit use useful at the same time. We've also managed to um, get some customers down there to get people actually engaged in it. Now they, they have to you know, get drawn out of a hat and all that sort of thing, but it's, um, it's been fascinating to see the interest grow. Um, now on top of that, um, whilst the above the line advertising was great for us, it did move our brand uh, measure in terms of sustainability, which is what we're, you know, one of the key things we're trying to deliver as a business. There was also a massive spin-off impact in terms of whenever this ad was shown on TV, the, the hits on the dock site in terms of adopt a, uh, adopt a kakapo went from about 500 per week to 14,000. So it got real engagement cut through. I think the actual adoptions of kakapo quadrupled, I'm told. Um, and that's delivered real dollars of about a hundred, for the nine months that, since we've been involved, about another $100,000 have come in through parties adopting Kakapo on top by being sort of um, uh, interested through, through the above the line marketing that we've been doing. So that's on top of the money we're throwing into the program. So it's been pretty successful to date and it's certainly something that we're really thrilled with how we're getting on. So I'll just um, show you some of that above the line marketing. Hopefully you've seen this, if you haven't. Um, She's nice. Moringa aren't just about renewable energy. They're also about renewing species, which is why I've been giving Gulliver here some help with the chicks. There she is over there now. Be yourself, and for goodness sake, don't jump on her head. I know you're scared. That's why there's hardly any of you left. Thankfully, the Kakapur population is slowly rising. So join with Meridian to help keep it that way. They're going to need all the help they can get. Uh, one of the most asked questions to, into our call centre after we started showing them that was, what, did we harm any of the birds in that particular clip? Um, the good news is it's all CGI, so make believe. But very, very well done, I think. Um, the, bird, the real birds are far too precious to be uh, put on a TV ad. But we're just making a bit of a play on the whole fact that their breeding um, practices aren't particularly uh, adapted to the, to the modern world and need a bit of help. So there'll be a, more of that coming along. Um, and, oh sorry, no, we're on the right page. Um, look, I just put the slide in there because I, want, I wanted to just point out a couple of areas that good, good partnerships for, from a business and a, um, and a delivery perspective work. Um, if I'm being totally honest, when, when the Kakapo program came to the Meridian Exec team as a, as a proposal, it was a line ball decision. It almost didn't get over the line. And the reason for, and it's not because we didn't believe that, you know, supporting a program to save a very endangered species wasn't really, really important. It's just that we've got limited resources and conflicting priorities. So the sort of priorities we were measuring this up against was, um, uh, was around, say, our Kids Camp program, where we put a lot of money and effort into supporting children that don't turn up to, you know, to, to, to school for decent feed in their stomach. 
and uh, putting gum boots on their feet and things like that. So it was, you know, starving kids, endangered bird. It was uh, for you people it, probably a bit of a no-brainer, but for for us it, it created quite a lot of debate. On top of that, we could have put more money into habitat restoration, both the Waitaki and Waiau chains. In fact, we're trying to do that anyway, uh, which is where our, our hydro developments are. So there was a, so it's, it's basically a trade-off, everything you do. And the reason why this one got over the line primarily was because we saw it as cool and new and it was promotable. Um, and, and that's a reality, uh, you, know, of, you know, the businesses are looking for some sort of payback. And, and so my, my, my message here is when, if you're involved in one of these programs and working with a business, do spend the time to get actively engaged with them, coming up with a, a, a leverage program that works for both parties, but one that's robust and dynamic um, and, um, and, and points to business um, outcomes. So business outcomes, it's not, I've said up there, I've made a glib remark, show me the money, it, but it's, it's probably more things like moving, moving your brand measures, um, customer retention rates, customer acquisition rates, staff engagement's a real big one. So um, work on those plans, engage with businesses to make it a win-win, uh, and that's the strongest or the best way to keep the money flowing at the end of the day because if the business can sort of see those business benefits, it's far, um, far more resilient to a change at leadership level, where a new guy might come in, new CEO, new GM retail, might have different views about the world, what's important, what are the priorities. So stay focused on those business um, outcomes and the money will continue to flow normally. And the last slide, uh, just, just basically summing up, um, I think we're really proud to be part of the Kakapo program. Uh, we're seeing genuine results. Uh, we love the work that the DOC guys do. Um, it's, it's working for us as well, so that's awesome. Um, as, as a business overall, uh, people care about this stuff. They're caring more and more, so we do need to be engaged. Um, we've got the resources. We're part of society. We're an intrinsic part of society, so we do need to be participating more. But my point is, I think we're getting it. Corporate leaders are there. Um, and we should see more of this occurring in the future. And I guess for me, one final point, I, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about the future, because, um, and I know there's not too many kids in this room, but from the people I talk to, the young people I talk to, they really do get it. And if I think about my children in particular, um, the sort of early 20s, teenage years, uh, they're far more aware um, about environmental impacts um, and interested than I ever was at their age. So I, I do believe that the business leaders of the future will come into their roles knowing that there just is no other way. Um, and that'll be awesome. Thank you.